Would you go to Ephesians, please? Book of Ephesians and the fourth chapter. We begin, uh, I believe it was last Sunday. <laughs> uh, in the fourth chapter, talking about this and uh, the title of the, of the series we've begun is Give No Place to the Devil. Give No Place to the Devil. Um, Ephesians 4 is where we find this phrase. If he, and we'll, we need to back up a little bit. Uh, let's see. Are you there in Ephesians 4? Yes, well, you beat me, didn't you? Uh, I was talking. <laughs> Ephesians 4 and verse um, 24 says, uh, Put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now, we uh, spent some weeks talking about the spirit of man. And how that there is an inner man and an outer man. And how that God is spirit and we are spirit. And the way God communicates with us is by his Holy Spirit. But the part of our being he communicates with is not our body, not our intellect, not our emotions, but rather our spirit. Now if you weren't with us, I believe it would be worth your time to go uh, watch that, listen to it. You can easily find it online at our website. It won't cost you anything. There's no charge for it. But one of the most valuable things you could ever learn in this life is how to be led by the Spirit of God. It's the answer to a thousand and one questions every day in life. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? You should check Him on the inside of you. The Bible said, in all your ways, acknowledge him. And what did the scripture say he would do? He shall direct your paths. And if the Lord's directing your paths, you're going to wind up at the right place at the right time and doing the right thing the right way. Uh, so he said, uh, uh, put on the new man. Verse 25, wherefore putting away lying, Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needs. Now, this, this goes on, and there's so many good things here, but the phrase is verse 27, neither give place to the devil. Now, just in this one sentence, there's so much revelation. There obviously is a devil, right? If there's no devil, then there's no issue of giving him place. There's obviously a devil. If you uh, believe the Bible and you believe God is real, then you should believe that what else the Bible says about spirits, that angels are real and the devil is real. Evil spirits are real. Now, we touched on this last time, but um, after being around this now for decades, uh, people seem to get in the ditch on one side extreme or the other when talking about the devil and evil spirits. Most people get in the ditch on one side and they don't talk about it at all, ever. <laughs> they pretend like there is no such thing. But then people get out of that ditch and go all the way across the middle of the road and to the extreme in the ditch on the other side and, and they talk too much about the devil and they're obsessed with uh, evil spirit activity and actually uh, are afraid of it. And there's a lot of fear with it. If there is fear connected with teaching on this subject, either it's wrong teaching or you're not hearing it right. 
Because what will the truth do for you? It won't put you in bondage and put you in fear. It will make you free. And it will make you free from fear. Fear is the enemy's environment. That's what he works on. He's always trying to put fear into people. And uh, it's no accident that all of the, uh, you know, the stuff that's written in horror novels and movies and anything that has to do with evil spirits or demons, they are depicted as terrifying monsters. But these are lies. I said these are lies. These are lies. If you as a child of God are afraid of the devil, then you don't know the truth. You are believing wrong things. If you are concerned and scared of evil spirits, then you need to be enlightened. You need to hear and believe the truth. And when you see things the way they really are, and you know who you are in Christ and what you've been given, you will no longer be afraid of the devil or any of his cohorts at all. In fact, you'll get sassy about it. <laughs> uh, we saw two things uh, last time. Uh, among other things, the scripture said in James, resist the devil, and what would happen? He will roar and scare you crazy. Huh? Resist the devil, and what would happen? He will flee. And in 1 John, in Young's literal translation, it says, do you believe there's one God? It says the demons also believe and shudder. Right. Yep. So demons shuddering and the devil running away does not sound like something you should be terrified of. And yet, millions either don't believe this exists at all or they are terrified of it. Let me admonish you, don't watch uh, horror shows, don't watch uh, shows that are supposedly exploring the supernatural and spiritism and looking for ghosts and what they call paranormal activity. Don't do this. Don't watch this, don't read this, don't listen to this, because if you do, you're just opening up yourself to be deceived. And the enemy will try to put fear in you through this. And uh, we're foolish if we open ourselves up like this. A child of God has no business dealing with any of the occult. Hmm? Never. Get anybody to read your palm. Don't have anybody or don't yourself read your horoscope. This is not harmless entertainment. Spirits are real. And they will try to deceive you if they can. They will try to influence you. That's what we're talking about. We need to be full of the Holy Spirit. And leave no room for the devil. That's another way of saying, give no place to the devil. Now you see three things he mentioned specifically that are actions that give the devil place. One is lying. If you tell lies, you actually give the devil place in your life. You allow him room to come in and activate and, and operate. It also mentioned anger. If you yield to anger and rage, you give, you open up yourself for the devil to come in and be active. He mentioned stealing. If you yield to taking things from people. The, how many understand lying is of the devil? So if you're yielding to lying, you're yielding to the devil. It is, is rage uh, of the devil. And, and rage and anger to hurt people. That's of the devil. You yield to that, you're yielding to the devil. Stealing, is that of God? Uh, who, would, who would influence you and tempt you to steal? 
Well, that's the devil. So if you're ye yielding to stealing, you're yielding to the devil. You don't wait till you see uh, a being in a red suit and horns and a pitchfork to resist it. In fact, the enemy presents himself as an angel of light. But what you do, anything that tempts you to do the works of the enemy is the enemy. Resist it. If something tempts you to lie, resist that and you'll give the enemy no place. If something tempts you to be, the Bible said, be angry and sin not, what does that mean? Just because you get angry doesn't mean you have to shout at people. Huh? Or hit people. You can be angry but not sin. Get a hold of yourself. Right? Do you have to tell lies? Help me out, child of God. Do you, does any child of God have to tell lies? No, you don't. You never have to tell lies. But you will be tempted. So you got to resist it. Uh, do you have to steal? You never have to steal. But you could be tempted. Hmm? Do you have to uh, fly off in a rage? You don't have to. But you, you will be tempted to get mad and upset. Said out loud, neither, neither. Give, place give place to the devil. To the, devil. the scripture said in, uh, in the Amplified, leave no room or foothold for the devil. Uh, don't give the devil any opportunity, one translation says. Uh, don't, don't give him any room to work. Uh, look, look with me in Luke, the, the 10th chapter. Well, actually, we can start in Luke 9. If we have the ability to not give the devil any room or place to work, we must have authority and power in our life greater than him. Elsewise, we couldn't prevent it. Can you see that? Isn't it true? Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Isn't it true the name of Jesus is the name above and greater than all other names. So we, we must have the authority and power to resist him or we wouldn't be told to resist him. And you see Jesus walked in this authority and power. He delegated this authority and power to the 12 and then also to the 70 and then also when he said all authority and power in heaven and earth is given to me after he was raised from the dead he turns right around and tells the church so you go go into all the world preach the gospel these signs will follow them that believe in my name they'll cast out demons you'd have to have authority right or you couldn't do it it's his authority, the head of the church's authority. He's the one that got it. He's the one that went to the heart of the earth and stripped the enemy and spoiled principalities and powers and brought them to naught and raised from the dead triumphant over all of them and said, I got the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He's the one that did it. But then he left the earth. And is set down at the right hand of majesty on high, but not before giving it to his church. Amen. How many understand? The Lord didn't go to the cross for himself. He didn't need it. He had no sin. So he got this authority for us. He got this uh, authority. He got this power for us when the spirit has been sent and given you and I have been authorized in the mighty name of Jesus. And we've been given authority and power too. This is something most of the church has not believed. And the devil is so afraid that the church will find this out. Oh, how he works to keep the church from finding this out. But he came too late for this church. These churches. Right? Right? Because we are aware and we are spirit led and we are spirit empowered and we are authorized. 
And we're going to see more and more fleeing and shuddering. You believe it? Because we're going to act more on what we've been given. In uh, Luke 9, 1, Jesus called his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them to proclaim the reign of God, this is Young's literal, and to heal the ailing. Chapter 10, verse 1, after these things, the Lord did appoint also other 70 and sent them by two and two before his face. Verse 17, the 70 turned back with joy and they said, Sir, the demons are being subjected to us through uh, in your name. And he said, I was beholding the adversary as lightning from the heaven having fallen. Now, the devil goes by more than one name. One name is Satan. Another is Lucifer. Another is destroyer, Abaddon, Apollyon, which both mean destroyer. But the devil is a fallen one. He fell and has been cast down from the place that he had and will eventually be cast into the lake of fire. His, uh, he doesn't like hearing his future talked about. Because he knows it's true and there's nothing he can do about it. And so I like to bring it up pretty regularly. Yeah. That soon, because if he ever asks you what you're going to do, what you're, have you ever heard that thought? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Ask him what he's going to do. Huh? When, when that big angel comes down with chains and slaps them on him. Hmm? And apparently he ain't all that bad because he can't stop it. He can't even stop this one angel with chains. And he puts these chains on him and casts him into the abyss and shuts the door for a thousand years. And there's not a thing he can do to stop it. He is already, even though he's active in the earth, he is all, his future has already been determined. Huh? I like saying that. His future has already been determined. He can't change it. He is the eternally defeated one. And he, Jesus said, I, I beheld the adversary as lightning from heaven having fallen. Lo, I give to you the authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt you. He gave the 12 this authority and power over all uh, unclean spirits and diseases. He gave the 70 this authority and power. Did he give us also the body of Christ? Yeah. This authority and power, yes. yes, he did. We're going to see this more and more, more and more clearly as we go. If you think, well, I don't know if I see it clearly enough, keep coming. Amen. I'm going to load you up. Yeah. <laughs> if you will accept scriptures, you will be convinced that you, a child of God, have been authorized in the name and empowered by the Holy Spirit over every evil spirit. Hmm? Yes, yes. And when you resist the devil, he has to flee. Yeah. And when the demons think about God, they, they shudder. And when they see you, it reminds them of God. Because <laughs> he's in you. God's spirit is in you and his name is on you. Hallelujah. And belongs to you. Now go with me, if you would, to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Now, if you want to do some more study of this on your own, Ephesians is a great place to study. And I mean the whole book, the whole six chapters. If you'll start in chapter one, read through chapter six, and look for uh, what we're studying now. You look for the authority. You look for, uh, you know, spirit activity and how these things work. You will see so much 
in the book of Ephesians. It's in every chapter. But in the sixth chapter, Ephesians 6 and verse 10, he said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. This is not you being strong in yourself. This is relying on his power and his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. There is a devil. We're told to resist him and give him no place. But here is specifically what we resist. We are to stand against what? The wiles. What is a wild? Uh, the scriptures say we're not ignorant of his devices. He is tricky. His tricks, his trickery, his craftiness. He never comes to the front door. He doesn't come as the devil. He's always trying to fool you and trick you some way. One of the biggest wiles and tricks the devil has pulled off, period, is that he has convinced most of the world he doesn't exist. And so you're certainly not going to resist something that you don't even believe exists, which is exactly what he's going for. The wiles of the devil. The only way the enemy has access to a child of God is through our minds, through the mind. And you see just exactly what happened in the garden is how the enemy continues to uh, defeat human beings t today. He came to Eve and Adam was there with her. And what did he do? Wiles, trickery, lies, subtlety. He brought suggestions and questions and implications. We, we, we should not get sidetracked into resisting the enemy and looking to see things and looking to feel things. The big battleground is the mind. The scripture said in 2 Corinthians 10 that uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not natural, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down what? Imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. This helps you to identify the reality of spirit. When you talk about spirit, spirit is another dimension besides this one. And when you just say that word or that, that thought, uh, you lose people a lot of times. They're like, if I can't see it and feel it, it don't exist. Really, have you ever had a thought? Huh? Hey, how many in here has ever had a thought? Let me just put you on record. Huh? Did you see the thought? Did you see it coming to you from out here? Oh, there's a thought coming. <laughs> Boom. Oh. You can't see thoughts. Huh? Can you see a thought under a microscope or through a telescope? Why? It's not material. So are you going to say because you can't touch it you can't see it, that it's not real. What intelligent person would say thoughts don't exist? Hmm? So thoughts are spiritual. They're spiritual. Imagery, imaginations is spiritual. Feelings, including the whole range of emotions, they're not just chemical. They're not just hormonal. <laughs> they, they have a source. They come from somewhere. Spirit 
is real. God is spirit. You are spirit. Angels are spirit. And the devil and evil spirits are real too. Uh, he said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against. And you will hear that phrase repeated, stand against. And later on it says, having done all to stand, stand therefore. But really you could add the word against. Every time you see this, stand against, which is another way of saying resist. Resist. And this is how you give the devil no place, is you resist him. If you yield to these things, to the wiles, to the thoughts, to the temptations, to the suggestions, to the feelings, to the evil influences, if you yield to them instead of resist them, then you give the enemy place. You allow him to come into your life and work and have a place. But if you will resist it, everybody say resist it. Resist this. We'll see a lot of things, but this is one of the biggest things we could possibly learn about this whole subject. When it comes to the devil, what do you do? Resist, resist, resist. Hmm? If you know it's him, you know all you need to know. Start resisting. Yeah, but he didn't even finish his sentence. Yeah, but it's him. Resist, resist, resist. Come on, now think about it. Should Eve had listened to the enemy speaking through the serpent, would she have been better off if she would have shut him off when he first started talking to her? Yeah. Yeah. Or should you let him finish his spill? He's been around for we don't know how long. He's much more clever than you might imagine. You and I are really babies in this thing. And human beings are really easy to fool in most cases when it comes to these spirits. But you and I have the Holy Spirit in us. And if we'll yield to him, we won't be fooled. And the moment we recognize it's the enemy trying to influence me, what do you do? You say, shut up and get out of here and resist in your authority in Jesus' name. That's what he's saying. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against. Every time you see the word against, I want you to read it out loud with me. Stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. These are four categories of evil or bad spirits. And uh, I believe Paul, the Spirit of God through him starts with the lowest one going, graduating to the highest level. Principalities, um, this is also translated beginnings. I know that sounds odd, but this is the lowest level. The word powers is actually the word for authorities. And the word rulers of the darkness of this world has to do with cosmos. The rulers of the darkness of the cosmos, and that's the world order. And spiritual wickedness, that's actually should be translated wicked spirits. Wicked spirits in high or heavenly places. So there are four ranks or categories of these evil spirits operating under the leadership of the devil himself. And they've been here a long, long time, longer than we know. There's much we don't know about this. Uh, I, I don't know that the Lord has told us, uh, you know, a whole lot about it. But um, uh, enough to what we need to know. There's a lot of things apparently we don't need to know about it. But let's take some time and um, go back and, and get a little history on how the enemy got started. It's not just a history lesson, but it has to do 
with understanding how to resist him. If you know what happened to him and what he did, then you'll understand he influenced Adam and Eve basically to do the same thing he did. And he continues uh, with every generation to influence human beings to do what he did, which was to rebel and to fall. Uh, go with me, if you would, back to the book of Isaiah and the 14th chapter. And when it comes to the enemy, what's one of the main things you need to know? Resist or stand against. You don't wait till you see a being if something is trying to influence you to lie. Hmm? Is that the enemy? What do you do? Stand against that. Resist that. If something is trying to influence you to be angry and be in a rage, what do you do? You stand against that. You resist that. Something's trying to influence you to steal. These spirits are always seeking to influence through thoughts through imaginations, through temptations, through feelings. And uh, we shouldn't be afraid of them, but we should be aware of them. And we should not be ignorant of the enemy's devices, recognizing how he's working. Just like people will try to influence you, their spirit's endeavoring to influence them. The Holy Spirit is endeavoring to influence us. We can yield to him or we can resist him. And the enemy is trying to influence us. There are all these influences in the unseen realm. We don't need to be afraid of them, but we need to be aware of them. Right? Anything contrary to the word of God, contrary to the love of God, contrary to faith and victory and goodness and blessing is coming from the enemy. We don't yield to that. We resist that. And if we truly resist it, tell me what will happen next. If we, if we really resist it, it has to flee. It has to go. It has to go because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. In Isaiah 14, did you find your place? We get some insight into the, uh, the origin of the devil. You'll find in more than one place that there is the, the, the Spirit of God will start talking about a, a natural ruler, a man. And then uh, before the chapter's over, he's talking about a ruler, but it's not the man anymore. He's talking about a spirit being behind the man. Without taking the time to read it, there are many scriptures that talk about this. The whole world is lying under the power of the evil one, 1 John 5 says. And 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 calls Satan the god of this world. And all the kingdoms of the world are being controlled by wrong spirits. This is why that many leaders who have good intentions and genuine motive when they, when they do finally get in office, wind up acting differently and going a different way. And they didn't intend it themselves, but men, most of the time they have no idea of the influences that are there. Which is one of the big reasons we are told to pray. Is that right? Pray for our leaders. Why? Well, they, they need to, to be surrounded with love and faith. They need to be strengthened by the Spirit of God. They need to know Him. And they need to, uh, us to stand with them resisting these spiritual influences that, that are controlling uh, countries, controlling states, controlling cities through the human leadership. This has been happening for millennia and it's still happening and it will continue to happen until Jesus returns. 
The only places on the earth where darkness is not ruling is where the light of the gospel has been manifested. Hallelujah. And the light and, and God's people are walking in the light of his word. That's the only spots on the planet that are not being completely ruled by uh, darkness, and spirits of darkness. You see here in, in Isaiah 14, and the, uh, about the ninth verse, well, I tell you, there's so much there, but uh, just, just verse 12 says, how are you fallen from heaven? Didn't Jesus say he saw the devil? fall? How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For you said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. This is a rebellion against God. Um, apparently, Lucifer had a throne and a kingdom. And I believe there's a case to be made that it was down here. And he wanted to exalt it above the stars of God, so it must be below and he wanted to, uh, to on, on the mount of the congregation, the sides of the north, verse 14, keep reading. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Well, then it must be, you, mean you were below them. I will be like the most high. Uh, we'll see in other scripture in just a moment that God did not create a devil. He created a beautiful wise, anointed cherub who had assignment and was a, a covering cherub and we don't know how long he existed as that. Who knows? Could have been millennia. Could have been longer. A lot happened before human beings got here. But uh, at some point it wasn't enough for him. He wanted more than what God had given him. He wanted uh, to be like God himself. And we see that he, he became enamored with himself. The reason I'm talking about this is he uses the same tactics on human beings. He wants to convince you you deserve more. People owe you. You should have more. And of course, when you get that, what will he tell you? You should have even more. And people owe you. And this is being unthankful. And this is being proud and not having humility. And so he, he left his place. He try, can you see? He's been around God. He knows how God operates. God speaks things into existence. And can you see he's trying to use that against God? Now that's ignorance. He must have thought it would work. And what's amazing, we see that he led a bunch of the angels with him. They must have thought he could pull it off too. But he didn't, and he won't. But he is now the enemy of God and your enemy. Notice what he said. Read it again. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. There's a whole lot of I. Can you see that? Pride. Self-exaltation. Thinking people owe you. 
is yielding to the enemy. Being unthankful and ungrateful and inconsiderate is yielding to the devil. It's giving him place. One of the ways to keep your heart and mind in the right place is to continually thank God. Be continually thankful. Thank God for what you do have. Thank God for the place and opportunity you have. Huh? Because you can lose it. You can lose it. People say, well, it couldn't get any worse. Oh, yes, it can. Oh, yes, it can. And what you stop being thankful for, you are in danger of losing. And the enemy, he's, he's trying to breathe his nature and his character into everybody on the planet. He wants you to be just as rebellious, just as defiant, just as deceiving and lying, raging thief and killer, just like he is. He wants you to sit around and stew and feel sorry for yourself and imagine that everybody owes you everything. Do you see the trick, ploy of the enemy? But you can catch that stuff when, you, when, you, when those thoughts come to you and those feelings come to you. Tell me, child of God, what to do. Come on, help, help. Huh? When they come to you, what do you do? Stand against them. And having done all to stand against them, stand against them. If they come a hundred times in a day, what do you do? You resist them and stand against them a hundred times a day and say, no, 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 nobody owes me. I got a lot to be thankful for. Is that right? Nobody owes me. I got so much to be thankful for. And instead of me thinking about what people need to do for me, I need to see what I can do for somebody. Be a giver, not a taker. Not a griper and a complainer, but a thanksgiver. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Not depressed, but rejoicing. Yeah. Not thinking somebody owes me, but being thankful. Thankful. Somebody say thankful. Yeah. Thank. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Yeah. Amen. So when I'm thanking God all day, I'm in the will of God yeah. all day. This is the will of God. He said, verse 15, after the devil got through trying to release his faith to rebel against God, God spoke some words his way. <laughs> you, talks so much about I, you will be brought to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see you will narrowly look upon you and consider and say, is this the man? Actually, other translations say one instead of man. Is this the one that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof and opened not the house of his prisoners? So the enemy has been cast down and will be completely cast out into the lake of fire. But this is what happened to him. Go to Ezekiel 28th chapter. And when you put these together, you see a, a more complete picture. Ezekiel 28. You, you understand, again, why we're talking about this. One thing is in the Bible, it's the word of God. We should know this. We should feed on it. But also, the enemy wants what happened to him to happen to you. In fact, he wants to take all humanity to hell with him. He's a killer and destroyer. But in order for that to happen, you'd have to do what he did. Reject God. Reject Jesus as your Lord. Rebel against God. We want to identify what he did. Know not just the words and the way of it, but the spirit of it, so that we identify it even from afar off and make sure we are not going to act like him, think like him, 
talk like him. I like what Jesus said when he came to the end of his earthly ministry. He said, the prince of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me. Don't you like that? How many believe that? The enemy couldn't get a, a half of a half of a half inch. Is that right? Place in Jesus. Jesus gave him morning, noon, and night no place. No place. No place. And he's our example to follow. In Ezekiel 28, you see that, that dual thing in this chapter really clear. He starts talking about uh, the prince of Tyrus, which was a man. But then uh, in chapter, verse, verse 11, uh, Ezekiel 28, 11, he talks about the king of Tyrus. And this is obviously not a man. You'll see what I mean by that. In, in verse uh, 12, he said, son of man, Ezekiel 28, 12, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say to him, thus says the Lord of God, you seal up the psalm full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. <laughs> what man is that? Verse 13, it's not a man. You have been in Eden. Well, the, that prince he was talking about hadn't been in Eden. You've been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold. Now that's some kind of garments there, isn't it? Your covering is precious stones. This is amazing. The workmanship of your tablets and of your pipes was prepared in thee in the day that you were created, not born, created. This is not talking about a man. So God created this beautiful being. Verse 14, you are the anointed cherub that covers, and I have set thee so. You were upon the holy mountain of God and you walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. That's not a human man that was alive. This is, this is Lucifer. Verse 15, you were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created till or until iniquity, or that word's also translated evil, was found in you. Now, this is, this is a big part of your view of the whole world and everything. Uh, you have people that try to tell you that God creates evil for his mysterious purposes. But it's just not true. If evil comes out of you, then evil was in you. Hmm? And if you create evil, where did you get it from? No. When God created man and the heavens and the earth, do you remember in Genesis 1, he created this and said, it's good. And the creator said, that's good. Created this is good. And he looked at everything and said, behold, it's very good. Yeah. So all of the stuff that came after the fall that is evil is not a part of God's original creation. Yeah. Our plan, it is a distortion. It is a perversion. And you'll, ha you'll hear people try to tell you that God made them with distortions and perversions. And what the Bible calls evil, that God made them that way. And you got whole camps that believe that God made the devil evil because he needed evil to balance out the whole system. <laughs> this is confusion. This is ignorance. The enemy twisted 
what God put in him. And iniquity and evil was found in him. And the devil fathered lying. Do you remember that? When the devil speaks a lie, he speaks of his own because he's the father. He's a liar and he's the father of it. God didn't create lying. And the enemy made himself the enemy. He wasn't created that way. Listen to Ecclesiastes 7, 29. This is true concerning people. Ecclesiastes 7, 29. He said, this I've found that God has made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. The New Century Version, the NCV says, God made people good, but they have found all kinds of ways to be bad. It's, it's wrong to say God tempted you. How many remember James says that? Don't say God tempted you. Don't let anybody say that. And it's wrong to say something evil or wrong that's in you. God made you that way. He did not. God makes us good. Right? When, he, when you're recreated in Christ Jesus, there's no bad in that new creation. But you still got a will. And you can even take good things that God gives you and you can twist it and you can use them for wrong. And the enemy did that. Go back with me to Ezekiel. Can I keep going? Y'all okay? Huh? Ezekiel 28, where did we get to? Fifteen, you were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created till, or we'd say until, iniquity or evil was found in you. By the multitude of your merchandise, that, that's a word for trading and commerce, they have filled the midst of you with violence. Do you remember in the days of Noah that the whole earth was filled with violence? And that was what brought the judgment of the flood. Wonder who's behind that? The destroyer. He's full of rage and violence. And anybody that'll listen to him, he will influence them into mindless violence and destruction. And stealing and killing. And of course one of his favorite things is war. All out killing and stealing and destroying. He is called the destroyer. He said, I will cast you as profane out of the mountain of God. I will destroy you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You have corrupted your wisdom. Who did it? Who did it? Did God make him a devil? No, he did not. You have corrupted your wisdom by reason of your brightness. I will cast you to the ground. I will lay you before kings that they may behold you. You have defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity or evil of your traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of you. It shall devour you. I'll bring you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. And they that know thee among the people will be astonished at thee. You will be a terror and never shall you be any more. So he is coming to a certain and unrecoverable end. But this is how the devil came to be. He corrupted what God made him. He corrupted his wisdom. Iniquity was found in him. He fathered lying. He led a rebellion against God. And he has been cast out. Now, we see with Adam and Eve, though, he's here. He, when did he get here? He was influencing the serpent 
to deceive them. The first two human beings on the planet. And he's here. When did he get here? The Bible said the earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. But Isaiah and other places say that God did not create the earth void or to be uninhabited. God doesn't create things like that. So there's every indication that something happened before we got here. And all these other spirits, these unclean spirits, these evil spirits, where did they come from? All indications are something happened, something was here, beings were here. We know a lot happened before we got here. Where did dinosaur bones come from? There was a whole different world, world system back in the past. And the enemy and these spirits are disembodied, but they're here when Adam and Eve come on the scene. And the first thing that happens is he wants to get back in control. He wants to rule and control the whole thing. He wants to control, and he can't do it as, because as a spirit being, he doesn't have a body, and these spirits don't have bodies, so they want to influence human beings and speak through them and express and act through them and control and rule through them. Look in uh, Luke, please, the fourth chapter. Luke chapter 4. I know I'm giving you some broad strokes, but uh, the word is true. Luke 4, when Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, he was tempted by who? By the devil. For those 40 days and 40 nights. Verse 5, Luke 4 and 5. The devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Now this would have been every uh, nation that was ruled over by any king or queen in the earth at that time. It would have included the Roman Empire. And... The, the devil showed that to Jesus. And verse 6, he said, all this power, and that's the word for authority, all this authority will I give you and the glory of them, of all these kingdoms, for that is delivered to me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. Now there's a lot of uh, theologians, Christians, they don't believe this. They say, ah, the devil was lying. Well, he was lying in there somewhere because he's talking. <laughs> but if he didn't have the power of it, there could have been no temptation. And don't you think the Spirit of God would have revealed to Jesus that he was lying and couldn't do any of it? No, this is the truth. The authority has been given to him. It was delivered to him. Well, who delivered it to him? Who gave it to him? Well, who had it to begin with? Who had it? The Bible in Genesis 1 the Bible said God made man in his own image. Then he said he gave to them dominion. You remember that? Yeah. He said he gave them dominion over the fish, the birds, the cattle, and the earth. Everything that's in the earth. So really you could say Adam uh, was the God of this world. He had the dominion over the planet. Next thing we know, 
Satan's called the God of this world, the prince of this world. And he said it was delivered to him. It was turned over to him. What happened? Adam and Eve gave him place. Can you see that? They yielded to him. They gave it up to him. They, they could have put him out. Couldn't they? They could have shut it down. They could have said, no, we are not listening to you. We are not acting on your temptations. Get out of here and don't come back. They had the delegated authority. God himself, the creator, gave them dominion. Think about kingdom. Well, dom is the, the root word for dominion. It's where the king has dominion or control. The Bible is, is full. I mean, there are hundreds and hundreds of references about kingdoms in the Word of God. Jesus talked much about the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. And the kingdom is where the king rules or has control. He said, let's look at it again. He said, all the kingdoms of the world, uh, he showed them in a moment of time, and the devil said, all this power or authority I will give you and the glory of them, for that is delivered to me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Is this going on? Huh? Is the devil ruling and reigning through these rulers of the darkness of this world, which are not human beings, they're spirit beings, but they are influencing people. And like I said, the more place of authority a man or woman gets into, the stronger these influences are going to come. If you don't have much influence, then the devil doesn't have as much interest in you. Because they can't control as much. But the more influence you have, then that's the more prime target you are. And so they will seek to influence you, bring thoughts to you, feelings to you, suggestions, move you to do things that's in the enemy's nature and in his interest. He said, if you'll fall down, if you'll worship me, all shall be yours. See, this was a temptation because the Lord, the Master's future is King of kings and Lord of lords. And the Bible says all the kingdoms will become his. And the enemy is trying to get him, give him a shortcut. You don't have to go to the cross. You don't have to do all of that. Just Submit to me. Bow the knee to me. See, why would the enemy say that? He's seeking more control. He wants more dominion. He still has a God complex. Why does he want to be worshipped? He wants to be God. And he will never be God. That's right. He's a created being. And now he is a corrupted, internally corrupted fallen being and when Jesus went to the cross and rose from the dead he stripped him he spoiled principalities and powers and made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it whoo hallelujah he but these things are still here in the earth and that's why the world is in such a mess. It's why there is so much cruelty and there is so much pain. It's not the plan of God. It doesn't please God. It's not the work of God. It's the work of the enemy. And like I said, the only places on the whole planet where darkness is not ruling is Places like your house. Huh? Faith Life Church. Where the light of the gospel has enlightened us and liberated us and we stop 
giving him place. We stopped yielding to his junk and resisted him. Hmm? The light of the gospel, the light of the word. It's a light versus darkness thing. And the darkness can only flourish and control in the absence of the light. Hallelujah. Are you okay? <laughs> Woo, thank you, Lord. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. 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 So the enemy is a fallen created being, a fallen cherub. He had a kingdom. He had a throne. He uh, tried to exalt it and wanted more. And he got cast out and cast down. But he and his spirits are still here. Um. Look with me back in Luke again. Turn over there. Actually, we could look at it also in uh, Matthew 12. Why don't we do it that way? Matthew 12. One of the names of the devil, and I think this is interesting, is Beelzebub. In uh, Matthew 12 and 24. Matthew 12, 24 says, When the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of, of the devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts, and he didn't say to them, That's a bunch of junk. None of that exists. <laughs> ah. He actually uses the term himself. So it must be real. It must be accurate. He said every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. So the enemy has a kingdom. And he's influencing all the kingdoms of the world. And there's a hierarchy, a rank in his kingdom. And the Bible said, verse 26, Jesus said, If Satan cast out Satan, he's divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils, or that's demons, by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come to you. How else can one enter, enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he'll spoil his house. Beelzebub literally means the dung god. <laughs> or... The Lord of Flies. The Lord of Flies. Or the Dung God. And you'll notice that more than once the, the scripture talked about unclean spirits. Brother Hagin said uh, when the Lord showed him, gave, gave him a vision about these things. He said at one point he he saw it, the Lord showed him in a vision how uh, spirits influenced a person and said there was this monkey looking, little monkey looking, imp looking creature that held open this man's head and swarms of what looked like big flies came into his mind, swarms of them. You can tell these things are present and active by the, the presence of torment in people's lives. Hell is a place of torment. And the activities of these spirit, spirit, wrong spirits will never give you peace, can never bring a healing or a restoration, can never bring any joy. 
Those are the fruit of the, Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Can you see that? But when people yield and give place to these things, they're vexed. They're tortured. They're tormented. And it's because they gave it place. And notice again, it came through the avenue of the mind. The mind. But instead of thinking about these huge, monstrous demons, you see pictures of them being small monkey-like imp creatures or big flies. This is reality. The other is fantasy. And these things come from things that happened here long before we got here. And these spirits have been around for generations and generations and generations. And the, uh, the same spirits, some of them that Jesus dealt with when he walked the earth, they're still here today. And this is why it seems things like spiritism and communing with the dead and reincarnation seem legitimate because people can contact and get influenced with these familiar spirits who actually knew these people 500 years ago. Can you see this? And were familiar with them and knew intimate details about them that nobody else would know. But that doesn't mean it's God and it doesn't mean it's right and it would be something to influence you. And there's no wonder people believe in, in reincarnation because there's evidence of it. People know things that happened in that person's life or in that person's life before them. But reincarnation is a lie. These spirits have been here generation after generation, which is why you should never participate in a seance. You're just giving place to the devil. You're just asking him to come in and deceive you. Because if somebody really is yielding to wrong spirits, they can, uh, they can communicate things that nobody else knew. But it'll be mixed in with some kind of deception to entrap you and to lead you astray and everything you need to know, the Spirit of God in you already knows and He will show you even things to come. Is that right? I don't need to go to some witch, to some spiritist, to some palm reader or seance. These folks need to get delivered and saved. They do. They don't know what they're playing with. They don't know what they're messing with. But these spirits that have been here, we don't know how long. I guess they were here before human beings got here. But they have no bodies now. And so they can't speak, they can't act, they can't do anything in the material realm unless somebody will yield to them. How many will say, they're going to have to look for somebody else? Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> because I, hmm? But see, if you're yielding to lying, you're yielding to them. If you're yielding to anger and rage, you're yielding to them. If you're yielding to stealing, you're yielding to them. There's a reason why we are commanded to walk in love. Can you see that? Didn't say try it. We are commanded to treat each other right. We are commanded to love one another, even as he has loved us. Can you see, if you do, if you do that all day and walk in faith all day, what else would you be doing? You'd be giving the devil no opportunity, no place, no access to you. He said, uh, uh, if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by, by whom do your children cast? He said, I cast them out by the Spirit of God. Actually, one other gospel writer said, by the finger of God. Don't you like that? Yeah. By the finger of God. Somebody say finger of God. Finger of God. <laughs> the devil ain't what he cracks himself up to be. He ain't the big bad monster that he claimed himself to be. When Jesus would tell wrong spirits, shut up and come out and go, the Holy Spirit would reach over and go, boom. <laughs> no wrestling, no big struggle, 
between the enemy and the greater one, just boom. The Lord of flies. Can you see that? The, the Lord of filth. Filth. See, these, these spirits, when people yield to them, then the person becomes what the spirit is. Can you see that? If you yield to a lying spirit, you become a liar. If you yield to an unclean spirit, you become unclean. Whatever you yield to, these, these spirits are endeavoring to make you like themselves. And this answers a lot of questions because people say, well, you know, I'm a man, but I feel like a woman. Well, there's a spirit trying to influence you. And maybe that spirit was female back whenever. But that doesn't mean you are. Come on, are y'all with me? Well, I'm a woman, but I feel like a man. It's confusion. And it's, the thing is, it is real. These feelings are real. And these thoughts and these desires are real. To say they're not is not true. It is real. And that's why people think, well, you don't know how I feel. That's right. I'm not saying it's not real. Just because it's real doesn't mean it's right. Just because it's strong doesn't make it right. These influences are all around us. And they seek to influence little babies. They seek to influence while uh, infants uh, are, are in the womb. Remember the Spirit of God moved on John the Baptist when he was in his mother's womb. You remember that? And he leaped. That's a spiritual influence on an unborn child. Well, if the Holy Spirit could influence, wrong spirits would also seek to influence, which is why we need to watch what we're around. What we're listening to, right? Yes, what we're watching, what we're feeding on, the music we're listening to. What spirits behind it? What influences are behind it? Because when it's wrong influence, we must stand. Go to Ephesians 6. I want you to read it again. Let it be burned into your consciousness. I wish I could tell you that we could just, you know, uh, defeat the enemy such a way in our life that he'd never come back and try to bother us again. I wish I could tell you that. But G even Jesus, after those 40 days and nights, the enemy exhausted trying to tempt him unsuccessfully, and the scripture said he left him for a season just to regroup and try, try to figure out what to do. So as long as we're down here in this dark place, there are going to be these influences come, but we shouldn't be frightened by it. Huh? Because we don't have to give in. It's real simple. I know I've said this before, but it'll bear repetition. A guy said one time, that he went to the city and they had this, this great uh, huge tall skyscraper they had just built and they let him go up to the very top of it and there was a tiny little balcony. He stepped out, held onto the rail. He said the cars just looked like little toys and he said this thought came to him, why don't you jump? Why don't you just jump? He turned around and said, you jump. I'm not. <laughs> that is so simple but most people don't have that awareness. A lot of folks would grip the rail and go, why am I thinking about jumping? And boy, that's a wrong thing to say. The enemy will jump right in and go, because you're suicidal. <laughs> no. Well, why are you thinking about jumping? Wow. I don't know. Because you're suicidal. No. What are you thinking about jumping? Yeah. You must be suicidal. Well. <laughs> See, the enemy, people are too easy to fool. They're too easy to mislead and deceive. And all you got to do is recognize where that came from. That didn't come from inside me. That did, the Holy Spirit didn't tell me that. Right? Where did it come from? Who would tell me to hurt myself? Not God. So what do I do? Help me out. What do I do? I 
Resist. Just, just like that, you say, no, I'm not stupid. I'm not doing that. Shut up and get out of here. These are some of the most important phrases you can learn. Let's practice it. Shut up and get out of here. <laughs> Let me practice it on this side. Help me. What do you, what do you say? Shut up and get out of here. How about over on this side? What do you say? Shut up and get out of here. That, that's resisting the enemy. Resisting the enemy. And what if it comes back in two hours? I said, shut up and get out of here. I resist you. I resist fear. I resist confusion. I resist depression, yes. heaviness, yes. sorrow. Yes. Come on, can you see this? Yes. I resist it yes. in Jesus' name. What did he say in Ephesians 6? You know, Timothy had told us to fight the good fight of faith. I'm, I'm almost, oh man. Good. That's right. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Let me read this and I think I'm done. <laughs> I didn't know it was that time. Uh, do you think this is important? Yeah. This is important. Yeah. Ephesians 6.10, let's read it again in closing. Finally, my brethren, do what? Don't be weak. Be strong in the Lord. See, weakness just gives in. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might... Put on the whole armor of God. Now, don't get carried away in the graphic pieces of armor. The, the armor piece represents a spiritual thing. Righteousness, salvation, peace, truth, faith, the Word of God. Can you see that? Yes. These are our tools, our weapons, our armor that enable us to resist, to stand against, to not be penetrated, to not be moved. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. So many times we're arguing and fussing with people, and that's not the problem. It's the spirits behind the people. It's the spirits they're yielding to. That's the problem. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places... Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, the day of attack, and having done all, to stand or stand against it. Stand therefore against it. And he goes on describing these different parts of the armor of God. It's an admonition. It's a command. It's an exhortation. What is your response, child of God, to this exhortation to be strong and to stand against it? Stand. What, what say you? Yes, sir. I will be strong in the Lord. I will resist the enemy. I'll stand against it. No matter how many times it comes, I'll resist the enemy and he has to flee from me. Stand on your feet, everybody. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Lift up your hands. Lift up your voices. Everybody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.